Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Here to give you guys a heads up on a bunch of Steam news and updates. A very, very strange bug has made the rounds as far as Mortal Kombat 1 is concerned. This dropped a few days ago and a lot of people uh, are bringing this up and it's a pretty weird one. So we'll go over that. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 has gotten a very strange update. We'll cover that very quickly. And today, Spider-Man 2 is officially out on PlayStation 5. Uh, Spider-Man 1 is available on PC, as is Miles Morales, and both of those games have gotten a bit of a patch on PC recently. I want to give you guys a heads up on the patch notes for those. But first of all, each Mortal Kombat 1 crash report, so if the game crashes, it makes a report of what happened, and it occupies up to 1 gigabyte of storage space. So yes, if this game crashed 10 times on you, 10 gigabytes gone just like that. As noted on TechSpot.com, users typically don't worry about accumulating crash reports because they are usually text files occupying a few kilobytes. However, with Mortal Kombat 1, players did notice that these crash reports are at least a gigabyte or around a gigabyte. And if you crash several times, uh, you're talking 10 to 20 gigabytes of uh, storage space, depending on how many times you crash. 10 times, 10 gigabytes, 20 times, 20 gigabytes. Ideally, the crash report would be at a whopping zero, but things don't work that way in the PC gaming world, given that uh, these things happen and games do crash. Even, like, the best of PC ports, uh, you know, sometimes they even crash, and, you know, there's 8 billion things going on on your PC. Sometimes crashes happen. If we can get through a game, avoid a single crash that's great but even some of the better ports that i've experienced um you know i've had them crash on me marvel spider-man i think crashed twice on me but i put like 50 hours in that game on pc so two crashes over the course of 50 hours i'll take that all day um you know if that would be the average across games like a, a crash every 25 hours of gameplay yeah it's still an annoyance but uh that is definitely something i can deal with i don't know what the deal is with mortal kombat 1 uh as far as its frequency and crashing, but there are users reporting finding up to 70 gigabytes of crash reports, so 70 gigabytes would have it that the game crashed 70 times, which is insane to think about, but uh, yeah. Uh, the issue with these fighting games these days is, you know, and this is outside of just the crashing, and this bug is just hilarious. I mean, it's unfortunate, but it's also hilarious at the same time. It's like a giant facepalm. Um, the issue with these fighting games is nowadays they're $70 and not only that with MK1 they did the early access gimmick so not only are they raising the price of games to $70 they attached the early access gimmick to it and with MK1 it wasn't just early access to the game quote unquote early access really what it is is you get to play the game on release date and those peasants that dis uh, that decide $70 is good with them they get to play the game later it's not you get to play the game early we've been over this song and dance but uh, that's how those things go they're also locked Locking the DLC characters, which to be fair, you get with the premium edition, but they're early access as well, and they're promoting that. Uh, this early access nonsense really needs to stop, and with MK1, the premium edition was $110, so yeah, it wasn't even like it was a $70, $80 uh, premium edition, obviously not $70, because MK1 is one of those games that adopted a $70 price tag, but you get the idea, um, you know, some games are still $70, bucks. Lies of P, I think, was $70 for its deluxe edition, and that offered quote-unquote early access as well, so it's a nonsense thing that a lot of developers and publishers are doing more of a publisher side of thing than anything, but yeah, MK1, as far as this bug goes, kind of hilarious, kind of hilarious. Moving on from that, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 just launched on Steam, and oddly enough, the game is online, uh, online only, but now... Uh, a brand new patch just dropped, patch 1.1. One of the fixes was the keyboard overlay now works properly for Steam Deck users, and Steam Deck users can now play offline. Now, it seems like it's exclusive to Steam Deck users. I believe that people have... People know that you can launch the game as if it was running on a Steam Deck, so that's not a big deal. You can still play the game offline. I believe that you can easily do that. Kind of weird that Pro Skater 1 and 2 would even have like an online necessity to it, but yeah, Steam Deck uh, would be one of the platforms I would imagine that most people want to play this game on, and it must be great on the deck, you know, getting it on the go or just playing it uh, on a deck. 
That's great, but uh, yeah, not being able to play it offline would be pretty whack. At least that has been fixed now. All right, lastly, I do want to give you guys a heads up on Marvel Spider-Man Remastered and Marvel Spider-Man Miles Morales getting uh, some new patches. Both games get uh, got patches on Wednesday. Maybe this is to, you know, uh, drop a patch right before the release of Marvel Spider-Man 2. I don't think it's that bad of an idea. I'm actually uh, playing through Spider-Man 2018 before Spider-Man 2 drops. Um, fairly far into it at this point. Decided I was initially while playing playing through it, I was like, I'm gonna do all the side content, I decided to opt not doing all the side content, I already 100%ed the game on PlayStation 4, uh, I played through the remastered version on PlayStation 5, and I did another 100% run on PC, I did that uh, last year, like in the fall of last year, but I wanted to play through the game again, ahead of Spider-Man 2, and I was, at, at some point, I was just like, alright, I don't want to do this side content again, I did a lot of it, but at this point, I'm just like, let me just go through the main story, I don't even know if I want to do the DLC again, um, I thought the DLC he was kind of mid for Spider-Man, but the game is great. I really enjoyed the game. I think the web swing in the game is tremendous, and Spider-Man 2 looks great, but as far as this patch goes, it notes, today's update for Marvel Spider-Man Remastered contains various optimizations and fixes. We've made CPU performance improvements for ray tracing and made performance and stability improvements for ray tracing on AMD GPUs. Intel Super Sampling has been updated to version 1.2 with support for dynamic resolution scaling. This update also tweaks the launcher interface to fit better on lower resolution or high DPI scaling screens, see the patch notes below for more details on the changes in this update. Thanks everyone for playing and sharing feedback, etc. Uh, I won't go over the entirety of the patch notes, but they are in the description box below. Um, again, improvements to CPU performance for ray tracing and crowd spawning. And ray tracing in this game, in my experience, also did kill my performance. It does, has, uh, it does have DLSS frame generation if you do have a 4000 series GPU, so you can check that out as well uh, if you do have a 4000 series. And then Miles Morales has got a brand new update as well. Miles Morales contains various optimization fixes. We've made CPU performance improvements for ray tracing and made performance stability. Super sampling updated to version 1.2. Same stuff there. Corrected an issue with left stick a diagonal controller input when Steam input is not active. Adjusted the launcher to fit on screens with low resolutions or high DPS scaling settings. Updated Intel version to 1.20. Improvements to CPU performance and so on and so forth. Stability improvements for AMD RDNA 3 GPUs as well. So Nice to see Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales get an update. I still think the games are pretty, uh, a little bit too expensive on PC. You can find them on sale for like $35 to $38, at least Spider-Man 2018. Miles Morales a little bit cheaper than that. Um, you know, these games came out back uh, in Spider-Man 2018's case, 2018, and Miles Morales back in 2020. Really, I think if they bundled both games for like 60 bucks at launch, that would have been good. And if that bundle at this point was on sale for like 35 to 40 I would be like, all right, maybe that's a price point that I could get behind. But uh, yeah. The PlayStation games on PC are just kind of expensive, kind of expensive, to say the least. The gimmick is they release the games at a high price point. Some people buy them right away, and then over time, they'll obviously lower the price point of the game so other people can jump in. I get what they're doing. It's just unfortunate that you got to wait two to three years for these games to come out, and you're still paying 60, 70 bucks. 60 bucks in most, uh, 60 dollars, yeah, 50 to 60 in most cases. No 70s yet, but uh, it will be interesting with Horizon Forbidden West Complete Edition. I imagine it'll be a 60 dollar release since that was the price point on. Uh, PS5 so yeah, there you go with that. But that's going to do it for me. Again, very wacky bug for Mortal Kombat 1 as far as crash reports occupying 1 gigabyte of space. Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2, uh, 1 and 2. That gets a nice update where Steam Deck can now play on offline. And ahead of Spider-Man 2's release, well, it's out today, but ahead of its release, it got uh, Spider-Man 2018 and Miles Morales both got patches on PC and Steam. That'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. As always, guys, thanks for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out. Hey, what's going on, guys? Mush here again. Hope you enjoyed the video. As you guys might know, YouTube's notification system is sometimes a little bit wonky, even if you're subscribed to the channel. Maybe you're not abundantly aware that I uploaded a video to remedy that situation. Make sure you hit the bell notification button. This way, whenever I upload a new video and I try to upload as consistently as possible, you will be notified directly of the upload and you can watch it as soon as it goes live. I would really appreciate if you guys hit that button so you can stay up to date with all of the the content I'm posting. But as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.